unlocked nobody else can join us and it's just you and me i'm going to uh, um, welcome you straight after the check-in let me just greet everyone hello hello wherever you are this is the soul dive my name is lebo i am so pleased that you got to be with us today we love 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 any time that we get to spend time with you soul diving i am not alone today i am with bridget edwards and i will tell you some more about her a little bit later in soul dive fashion let us go ahead and have our check-in for the evening remember this is a time to look after yourself to ground yourself in the moment to pull yourself towards yourself and um, in this time you are not all of the labels that describe you you are not mom uh, employee or anything you are not boss babe you are just the sovereign soul connecting with all of us all over where we are and connecting most importantly with yourself Right, so I invite you to take four deep breaths. So that's heavy breaths. <sighs> Breathing in through the mouth, out through the mouth as well. Just heavy cleansing breaths. Give yourself permission to relax, relax, relax. Giving an instruction to all of your body to relax. Now finding your normal rhythm of breath. If your breath is shallow, you are with it. If your breath is rapid, you are with it. If you're breathing through your nose, you are aware that you're breathing through your nose. Breathing through your mouth, you're aware that you're breathing through your mouth. Bring your attention to where your breath is at the moment. If you can feel it cool coming into your nose, warm going out, find your natural rhythm of breath. You are breathing just like normal, bringing your attention completely to your breath. Now go ahead and place a hand on your heart. Feel the warmth of your hand over your heart. Your mind, go ahead and bring yourself to focus on your breath. As thoughts come and thoughts go, bring yourself smilingly back to your breath. Becoming aware of where you feel your breath the most. Whether it's on your nose, whether it's on your mouth, whether it's on your chest, while keeping your hand over your heart, that warm hand over your heart, give yourself permission to relax even deeper. Relax, relax. Breathe. Just be with your breath. Relaxed and just being with your breath. Go ahead and feel your heartbeat while you are breathing. Mind focused on your breath and also just away from your hand of your heartbeat. These are the things that ground us and give us permission to be in this planet as these beings that we are. Our awareness of them is our awareness of ourselves on the most fundamental, basic level. Now, as you breathe in, feel through your body. If there's any part that feels a little bit uh, tired or kinked or anything like that, pull your in-breath and imagine it going into that space in yourself. Breathing directly into your back, if your lower back is a little bit sore. Making sure that you keep your feet grounded. Aware of your breath, aware of your heartbeat. Aware of how little you have to do to make them work. Aware of how they just automatically do what is right and know how to keep you going. 
allow your heart to be filled with a sense of gratitude over all the things that go right without your knowledge or your interference all the things that happen to make your life work that you don't have to do anything about smile now silently or out loud say these words with me I am enough I have enough I do enough your next breath go ahead and raise your hands up above your head in a stretch stretching out raising the hands as you breathe out bring your hands over over your chest cross them over palm over shoulder and give yourself a nice big squeezy hug remember that you can always look after yourself in this way <laughs> let's pay the bills let's see um we've got <laughs> Apologies, something dropped. Uh, we've got a read on advert. Uh, if you are looking for online business opportunities, look no further. Go to www.readybusiness.co.za. That's if you would like an opportunity for your own online store, um, they are created for you on www.readybusiness.co.za. Hello. Hello, Bridget. Hi, Lemo. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Welcome very much. Welcome to the Soul Dive. Thank you so much. What a beautiful meditation that was. I could just feel myself just relaxing. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> That's brilliant. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Now, Soul Diver, this is um, Bridget Edwards. She is uh, an author. She is a deep, sensitive soul that looks for opportunities to help others, to hold space for them, to um, give healing to them through her own experiences, having learned from her own adventures um, how to self-heal. She's extended that and is now actually an emotional uh, well-being catalyst. Uh, I think I've introduced you a little bit, but there is so much more to you, <laughs> just like all of us. Do you want to tell us one or two things that you're really particularly proud of about yourself that so I don't miss the opportunity to celebrate that? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Lebo. Yeah, the, one of the things I really am proud of is other than the work I do helping people and heal them is the book I wrote, Stress Gone. There we are. Um, especially because I was dyslexic or considered dyslexic as a child. I never thought that writing a book would ever be on my agenda. So, yeah, that is something I'm really, really proud of. Thank you. It's almost like being dyslexic is a precursor for actually being wildly successful later. I mean, how many famous, successful people have had dyslexia? Like the thing, it's a classic David and Goliath thing where the thing that we considered to be a weakness has become our strength and maybe sometimes our protector from the, a world that thinks in, in, in a sheep mentality, following the norm and stuff like that, you know? Because you, you're already dyslexic. You might as well go short-lived. <laughs> um, we're talking... <laughs> How have you found it, though, the transition from, from actually like taking charge of the definition of yourself, not as a dyslexic person, but as a very able person? How did that work for you? Well, I have to say that I didn't know I was dyslexic as a kid. I just knew that I had a problem in the classroom and I really struggled reading and writing and comprehending. And how that worked out for me, Lebo, was that I learned to listen. I learned to pay attention 
to all the other signs around me, which has been hugely beneficial in the work I do now. So, um, and then years later, when I, I was in my early 20s, I took myself off to night school. I'd moved up to Johannesburg and being in the business world, I was like, oh, well, I cannot live without being able to read and write properly. And, you know, I needed to be able to keep up. So I took myself off to night school. And at night school, that's when they said to me, you're not dyslexic. And I was like, oh, wow, is that what's been the problem all along? And I was like, okay, that makes sense. So they sent me to an optometrist who checked my eyes. And the first thing he said to me, when he saw the movements of my eyes, he said to me, you had a lot of stress as a child. And I was like, how do you know? He said, I can see from the movement of your eyes. That's why they're bouncing all over the show. So instead of reading like normally across a straight line, my eyes were up and down. So they were picking up letters all over. So very quickly, he gave me some exercises to do. And very quickly, within a short few months, I could read normally. And then my speed started to pick up. Magazines came alive. Books came alive. My whole world changed. And that was in my early 20s. Wow. And I was like, oh, wow. Then I could actually start taking on things as opposed to just listening and really focusing and, and paying attention, which I'm so grateful for because that has helped me so much as a therapist now because I'm watching for things that happen on a nonverbal level with the person I'm working mm. with. But actually, it, then mm. once I fixed this and we healed this um, mechanical eye problem, I started reading books, I started devouring books, I caught up um, my speed of reading. So actually that ho opened up a whole new world for me in a totally adventurous way. So it was quite a, a weird cycle wow. of events that yeah. really, you know, if I can say divinely inspired, because mm -hmm. had I not had this disability as a young girl, I wouldn't have developed mm. the empathy and the highly sensitive stuff that I've developed for the therapy work I do today. So actually it was a huge blessing. Absolutely. Yeah. That is brilliant. You know, you've just brought up something that I've never made a link with that in actual fact, a lot of what we consider dyslexia also has to do with stress. But of course you talk a lot about stress. I've heard you a number of times say, um, your your entire life is defined by stress. I want you to just tell us a little bit about you know where you grew up and that kind of thing. You've told us about your your coming of age and um, going into to finding your calling. But I'd really like to know a little bit more about uh, you as a person. Just like you know, yeah, talk some more about that. Perfect. Thank you. So I grew up in, I was actually born in the Eastern Cape and spoke Dorset before I could speak English, much to the horror of my mother Eastern because Cape. she didn't understand a word I was saying as a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> then my parents moved up to KZN and I learned to speak Zulu on the farm there, which I've unfortunately, I've forgotten mm -hmm. all of that now because what you don't use, you kind of lose sadly. What? Hold, yeah. hold up. You are living in this country with so many people that speak Kosa and Zulu and you've lost it? Yeah, I can, I can pick up things and I can understand things, you know, and when I immerse myself back into the culture of being amongst Zulu or Kosa people and I really hear it, then things come back. But, you know, in my day-to-day -day life, course, I'm speaking yeah. so much English. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's yeah. kind of my mother tongue, actually. But I really, when I go back into the rural areas and I'm really immersed, I pick it up really, really quickly. It kind of comes back to me. So, yes, and then it's my incredible. parents divorced when I was young. And um, the relationship I had with the, as a young girl with my father, I developed duodenal ulcers. I was shipped off to boarding school when I was six years old until my matric. So that caused me a lot of distress and a lot of unease and, and uh, discomfort. As a result of that, I now that I understand post-traumatic stress the way I do, I believe I developed post-traumatic stress very early on. Then I got, yeah. I got married to a childhood or a high school sweetheart, and that was a highly abusive relationship, um, very mm. violent, which added to the stress that I already had. Whilst I was going through my divorce with him, my only brother was killed in a car accident, uh, just to mm. compound the stress. And then a few short years after that, my mom succumbed to cancer and she passed away. So 
that all happened level literally by the time I was 26, 27 or so. Um, mm, so really, mm, in mm. my young years, I went through a lot of stress. A lot of stress. Kind of stress. A lot. Yeah. And I'm curious. I, well, that also, you know, the school not yeah. you know, understanding that really compounded things. So that's why I say that my early years were defined by trauma and stress, um, which is why I do what I do yeah, today. Yeah, I understand yeah. it so well. In this journey, so like when you are going through so much stress and, and stuff like that, there are questions that are, are, are always burning in you. So I'm going to phrase this in two ways. So there's a question that you were born with or you got aware of when you were probably like, I don't know, eight, that probably runs your life till today. But um, I want you to speak to that just now. But first I want you to tell me, what is a truth that is just like burning and seeking your attention and and becoming almost central to your life at this point right here right now the burning truth is that of love and especially because of what we've gone through with the pandemic um i've realized okay. the self-love is so important love of life love of health love of well-being love of the freedom and the choices that we once had which we have been curtailed so much with lockdown um love of others yeah. love of animals love of the outdoors um with love comes a sense of peace and what's also been really interesting and been highlighted in this time period with lockdown is that love and fear cannot coexist the two are so one opposite. person oh my gosh yeah so for me that has been such a powerful awakening for me because there's been so much fear around and everyone buying into the fear with the virus and the pandemic and lockdown and masks and i'm like wow when you are so consumed with fear where's the love they are almost yeah, polar yeah, opposites. So yeah. that has been something I've been focusing on and really tapping into self-love specifically. Um, it's been very, very important for me. And it's a truth that has really captivated me over this time period and has made me want to seek more of the truth of loving myself. Because, you know, Lebo, the more I love myself, Absolutely. the more I can love others. The more you can love others. Like yes. it's a, it's a, it's an internal job. You've got to do it here first. Exactly, exactly. Because if yeah. you don't if you yeah. don't have a capacity for self love, in other words, mm. you are more in likely to be in a space of fear and self hatred, self loathing, um, negativity, all of that kind of thing. So if you're not able to love yourself, how can you honestly love somebody else? And, you know, I yeah, think one of the yeah. biggest mistakes we make in relationships uh, when we're looking for a relationship and a partner, we often say, oh, I'm looking for my other half. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> you <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you are a whole person. That's and ridiculous. I yeah. I keep yeah. somebody, yeah. you are a whole person. So the more love you have inside you, the more of, your understanding of yourself. You know, there's a beautiful saying, man, know thyself. The more you know yourself, the more you know what you want, what you don't want, what your boundaries are, what you're prepared to accept, of course, or, you know, of what course, you're prepared course, to come yeah. your way. So this, 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 I love this question of yours because it really opens up so much <laughs> around what we can love, but it all begins with self. Yeah. It all begins here. Yeah. You know, my goodness, you, you should see your eyes. They're like glowing. You're coming. And if you were a paper mache doll, you would be coming unglued right now. But we need to keep it moving. So I'm going to ask you this. You are aware of um, what, what stress did to you and what you went through and how it affected your body, uh, your spirit, your soul, your body on every level. I want to talk about, was there, is there a moment you can point to and be like, that was the moment of a turnaround when I did, because of course self-love happens with you participating fully. It's not something that you just like automatically happen and then you find yourself healed. What is that moment for you when you, it turned around for you or where you turned it around? What was the catalyst for that? And what was that moment for you? Oh, wow. Um, probably around 2007, 
I, end of 2006, early 2007, I had several other traumas that hit me one after the other. And in that time, I made a really radical decision. I decided to take myself off to go and walk the Camino, which is an ancient pilgrimage through northern Spain. Well, actually from, from France across through northern Spain. And yeah. that three months of walking, as so I was walking on average about 25, 30 kilometers a day with a backpack on my back and striding out every single day. And in that wow. moment, I decided I wanted to do something totally different for my life. I, everything that I'd known, I wanted to not, not throw away because you can't ever throw away anything in your life. You know, it's part of who you are. But I really, that was a hugely defining moment. And on that walk, when I left South Africa, uh, every day I was saying, okay, I want to have, I want, show me what I should be doing for the rest of my life. Show me what is my life's path? What is my meaning? What is the purpose? I'm here for some reason. Who am I? What am I? So I had a lot of alone time walking every day in nature through these beautiful communities in the rural areas, wow. cities, villages. A lot of the time I chose to walk alone because I wanted to be with myself to figure out what was going on in my life. And mm, that's, mm. After that three months, I came back to South Africa and that's where I discovered the healing technique that I, I use. In fact, while I, when I left there, I was so disappointed because I didn't have it. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So I've done all this walking. Now what? Like, so <laughs> so it, just, it felt like you haven't arrived at exactly. your answer. Exactly. I okay. got back to South okay. Africa yeah. and as I, I moved into a new apartment in Johannesburg, set up my laptop and was looking online for something. And there this technique was, and I was like, wow, you know, it's amazing. The wow. universe or God, whatever spirit you, whatever you want to call it, this higher power that is there for us delivers on time when we need something, not when we think we want it, but in the right time at the right moment when you need. That was such a defining moment. And I love that. Then my life changed and it's been amazing. Wow. I am I, I'm becoming aware from what you've just said that there is a part where you were consciously asking these questions and very much aware. But perhaps all of that consciousness of asking these questions over that three month period was dealing with your below consciousness awareness. Um, do you believe that that's kind of how it actually drops into your, your subconscious? Oh, absolutely, Lebo. I do believe that, especially when you are so intentional as I was. And then, of course, the physical exercise of walking every day and thinking about what was going on it very definitely does drop from the conscious awareness into the subconscious awareness because I was so much a yeah. part of it. I was also releasing a lot of trauma at the same time. So, you know, the more you release, the more you can take on. Had I not released so much that I was dealing with, I probably wouldn't have been able to take on this new mm. idea and this new way forward. So I certainly believe it was a combination, but very definitely, you know, we can't, it's very difficult to, impress a conscious thought onto the subconscious really quickly it does take time this is why affirmations take does, time yeah. over a period of time to kind of settle in so yes i think the activity made a big difference that is incredible i want to i want to switch gears a little bit so we've talked a little bit about how you released uh, some of the stress from actual physical um, doing and um, sort of just bridging that gap between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind and that's brilliant because we can never process stress until we actually have those two talk together but I want to talk about the, the current global mental health pandemic that we are going through at the moment yeah yeah the first time I've said those words like that do you agree with me? Are we going through such? Absolutely. In fact, I consider this a crisis uh, greater than the supposed pandemic of COVID-19. And I, the reason I say this level is not something I sucked out of my thumb. Um, mm. I've been looking at global statistics and many doctors around the world are saying they've seen far greater suicides as a res far more suicides than COVID-19, either from COVID-19 or with COVID-19. So regardless of whether it's with the COVID mm. comorbidities or not, they have seen far more suicides 
and in a very short space of time. In fact, the one American doctor, he said he had seen more suicide deaths in one month than he had an entire year in his career. My goodness. So I wasn't aware of that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then there are also lots of statistics, which I'm not going to go into now, that confirm that people's depression, anxiety levels have gone through the roof because of all the fear. You know, the fact that we cannot be with our loved ones, that we are stuck in isolation, that we can't visit our friends, we can't go and do things that we love. You know, being in lockdown all this time has made people feel lonely, isolated, severely depressed. For many, this has yeah, triggered yeah. post-traumatic stress disorder. In fact, I, I had a gentleman reach out to me online from America uh, in the last few days saying that he thought he had dealt with all his, because um, he's a war veteran, thought he had dealt mm, with all his mm. post-traumatic stress disorder from that time, and he was in a very happy space until lockdown hit and it triggered it all again. And so sure. many, many people are in a severe crisis now. Liberal, you know, we've also, people have lost their jobs. They are homeless. That's They've true, that's business. true, yeah. yeah. People are starving. Yeah. You know, people are out oh. on the streets right now. You know, these are, yeah. these are highly successful, or were highly successful people that had amazing businesses. That's fine, yeah. And this has just totally taken the rug from underneath them. So this is why I honestly believe that the consequences of the pandemic have created a global mental health crisis. And it's not just for the moment. My biggest concern is this is going to be a consequence for months and years, maybe even decades to come. Maybe even decades, yeah. What I'm yeah. also concerned about is these little children who are being forced to go back into school wearing masks, having to sit from it next to, you know, they can't sit and play with each other like they are used to. What is the damage on these children that are being put into mm. these cubicles, you know, small cubicles away from each other? They are being forced to do online learning. You know, as an adult, you and I can, we have the ability to go, okay, this is only for a period of time. Uh, just we, we yeah, yeah. But a child yeah. doesn't have that. And especially in those young formative years, mm. what mm. damage yeah. has been done on those individuals and those little kids. Mm. So, And then seeing yeah. their parents freaking out at home, seeing their parents in a fearful state, worried about- Seeing their parents in all forms. Sleep, yeah, because now there's not even time that you are away and you can go and pull yourself towards yourself. Yes. You're kind of on each other's 72-inch display 24-7. Exactly. exactly. And mm. then, of course, mm. gender-based mm. violence has increased. Um, that has increased. There, there's so much anger in this world. We're now discovering all the human trafficking, the sex trafficking, uh, underground tunnels where there are all these thousands of mm -hmm, children mm -hmm. it is, stop 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 we cannot go deeper and deeper into that it's all really really horrible so what i want us to do is talk about the question of with all the really genuine mm -hmm. honest to goodness life is stressful everybody's going through something and it's really really hectic out there that it is charged with so much stress and tension mm -hmm. is it possible to have deep inner peace Absolutely. in this time Absolutely. and there's so much stress outside am i able to bring myself to a place of deep inner peace from which to love to act to connect with others absolutely level it's a choice I, I just want to say something that stress is contagious it's like the flu you know it's contagious okay laughter is also contagious so what are we choosing as a being, as a sovereign being? What are we choosing to be part of? Are we cho choosing to be in the fear or are we making a conscious choice to go, hold on, there's fear all around me. I acknowledge that fear. I accept that fear. But you know what? I'm choosing to be happy. I'm choosing to be healthy. I am choosing to guard my thinking from negative thinking to positive mm. thinking it is yeah. a choice and it's a very mm. simple thing that we can do with ourselves to go you know what i don't want to participate in this so we can remove ourselves from the television we can remove ourselves from social media and give ourselves just like you opened your show this evening breathe yeah. connect with myself 
accept where I am. And then I spoke about self-love. That is a choice we make. So very, very definitely we have a choice to either be stressed, depressed and miserable and unhappy or to go, okay, I choose to be happy and healthy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want us to go to some comments just now. Um, can I go, is, is the comments there? Let me, let me just see who's with us. Um, I can't really see who's with us because I'm, I'm, of course, just focused here. So I'm going to do it like this. Uh, we had Shirley come through. Hello, guys. Uh, Shamil Parker, hello. Um, and let me see who else is with us. Okay, I'm not seeing the comments. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, we'll deal with that a little bit later. That's fine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm trying to check on my producer's phone and when you already don't know the phone and you're trying to see the comments, it's, it's a bit of a thing. I promise I will comment um, or reply and all of that after uh, the show. We will do a watch party and we'll engage with you still. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, Bridget, you wrote a book. You showed it to us just now. Surely in that book of yours, there must be some tips and tricks and ways to actually make this real so we're not just um you know visualizing myself on a beach but we're actually practically doing things to 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 uplift myself from the stress uh and to bring myself internally to a place of peace tell us about some of those some of those um ways that we can deal with it i love what you touched on there imagination that is a critical key. So imagination, affirmation. And by the way, one of my um, tips I was gonna give was the I am enough statement, which you made right in the beginning. That's very definitely one of them that I love and I use. I also love to phrase the question, what else is possible? So it's a very open-ended, you know, like even when you are oh, in a bad space, thing. By saying to yourself, what else is possible, it opens up the mind and opens up the subconscious to what else is possible in our environment. So by having that open-ended question and being in a positive frame of mind, these are things that I go into. But I'll give you a couple of other quick tips. Meditation and prayer are wonderful ways of stilling the mind, calming the mind, calming the body breathing a breathing technique i do in my book i have 16 different body-based exercises several of them are different breathing techniques some of them are hand um, mudra techniques because when we are stressed we tend to fidget for a very good reason our body's trying to release all the stress chemicals running through there yeah. i have um so many different exercises then i have 50 different lifestyle strategies as i call them so Prayer, meditation, journaling, gratitude. Sleeping is a very, very powerful one. We don't get enough sleep. Very, very important. It is said that 90% of crazy is sleeplessness. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes mm. you anxious. It makes you depressed. It mm. makes you stressed. So sleeping and good quality sleep. In my book, I describe how to make your room dark, how to switch off any flashing lights, not having a television in your room. That will allow you to go into the deep sleep so that your melatonin, serotonin cycle can um, improve and that can help you because those hormones are very important in balancing your stress hormones as well. Laughter yeah. is a great one to bring in your happy endorphins. So if you can, go and watch those ridiculously silly, childish little cat <laughs> videos or the little kids giggling and laughing. <laughs> Anything that can stimulate your laughter is going to stimulate your your endorphins, your happy hormones. Yeah. And that is going to replace what is so we have when we hug each other and we love each other and we connected with each other, that stimulates oxytocin. And that's the feel-good hormone which counters the stress hormones. It so it helps reduce the stress. Now, with us mm. having to be in lockdown and not with each other. You by laughing, that is still going to stimulate the um, okay. oxytocin. So by mm. laughing a lot, and by at least giving yourself an hour's an hour's worth of laughter, and I'll share a little anecdote with you in a moment. But an hour's worth of laughter every day is going to make you feel 
much happier. It's going to elevate your vibration. So here's Absolutely, something very yeah. interesting with laughter. There was a story about a man who was basically sent home to die. He, he was so ill and the doctor said, listen, there's nothing else we could do. So you might as well go home and, you know, live out your last few days there and live out your, your life with your friends and family around you. And he was like, no, I'm not going to accept that. He said he went and took himself off to a motel and all he did all day was watch funny videos. Day of day oh, yeah, day. Right, no. And he ended up living longer and longer and longer. And eventually he felt so good. He went back to the doctor and he said, please check me. And they were like, you're completely clear. Whatever yeah, he had yeah. completely healed just from laughing every single day. So this is wow. something that's so yeah. simple that we all have access to. If we can laugh a lot more, we will be happier. We'll have more joy in our hearts. We'll have more gratitude and definitely we'll have more peace. Um, these are the kind of things. And then, of, of course, eating a proper healthy diet with lots of fresh fruit and veggies, preferably raw, oh. preferably organic. So they're not all those nasty chemicals, GMOs, all of those kind of um, nefarious things. And then, of course, being in nature, going for walks in, in the mountains if, with trees or at the sea, all of that kind of thing is very good. And barefoot. Now, this is something people think I'm crazy. My producer is, is, is literally about to burst out laughing because um, I think he thinks that you sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> So this, is, this is absolutely brilliant. Please carry on. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I grew up on a farm. So for me, being yeah, barefoot yeah. is my best thing. I literally, when I'm at home, I never have my shoes on unless my feet are cold. Then I'll put maybe my slippers on or something like that. But if I can be outdoors, walking in the grass, lying on the grass, being in the sun, vitamin D is we need to lie in the sun with as little clothing on as Absolutely. possible because yeah. the sun rays, it's that natural pranic energy that we draw mm, from the mm, sun. Mm. We feel so energized yeah. by it. So even for myself, in wow, the summertime, I spend like half an hour in the sun every day, midday sun, literally 10, 15 minutes on either side just to, to get the sun rays so that it can elevate me. And I feel so strong as a result. It take it really yeah, reduces yeah. your stress tremendously. It De wow. reduces depression, anxiety, all of those kind of negative things, the emotions that people carry. That is brilliant. I want to um, start wrapping up a little bit. So please, you've told us so much about the things that you suggest in your book. How do we get a hold of this book? And can you hold it up one more time so we actually see it? Is it in bookstores? Um, or is, is it, yeah, okay. Please talk about how we get a hold of it. Stress gone. Yeah. It's, and it's quite a thick one. How many pages is that? Uh, there are 360 odd pages in the book. So it is thick. Yeah. Because there's a lot of content in there. So just to sum up what is inside the book for me, I wrote it in a way that it would be emotional first aid for people as well as uh, stress okay. relief and healing. So level, what I'm going to do is, for me, having my books in a bookstore was never a financially viable thing at all. So what I'm going to do for your viewers is they can download my book and I'm running a, a special offer at the moment specifically because of lockdown and the pandemic. And I know so many people are struggling financially and they are in need of emotional first aid. So what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and I've, I've got a link for you, which we can give to the listeners, is they can download my book for what I consider pay what your heart feels on a contribution or fair pay basis. So in other words, if somebody can afford my book normally in, in, in this, in this context sells for 380 on my website, I'm selling it in American dollars at, I think it's $37 on my website. People, if they can only afford a hundred rand or 200 rand or 300 rand, there is a South African link and there are my EFT bank details there as well. Um, there's a okay. snap something or something like that, snap scan. They can use that if they have that on their phone. So they can go and? download the book and get the book 
by making a small contribution, whatever that, if they want to make me a big contribution, I'll gladly take it. Um, if they, if they, whatever they can feel, honestly, level, it's from my heart to their heart, whatever they feel they that's can really contribute. Cool. Yeah. That is what I, and that's why I'm putting it on a, on a fair pay basis. So there it is. It's, it's my Brilliant. gift to the world during this time. Thank you so much for that. Definitely the links will be there, but just for uh, those of us who want it to be verbalized, what is your website address so we can find you on there? Okay, my website is www.bridget, B-R-I-D-G-E-T, dash, Edwards, E-D-W-A-R-D-S, dot com. Fantastic. So I'm going to go and do attempt number two to read the comments. Okay, we've got the phone back. Okay. Um, <laughs> Taloshini Govinda says hello ladies hello. she does not have any questions so guys if you've got any questions that you want us to quickly deal with or talk about we are open to that and of course after this I mean um, you'll have uh, access to actually answer some of the questions and do some interaction as well so please go ahead and, and post some of those for us and then Theo Enichi says Makes sense. I make that face because the way he typed it, it looks like he would have that face. Um, <laughs> so these are some of the comments that we've got. It is so important um, to feel that you are always advancing in life, that you are always sort of moving forward. Um, what's his name, that uncle that says success is the pursuit of a worthy goal? Uh, not in, oh, I forget his name every time I want to say it. Never mind. I'm not meant for name dropping, so sorry for that. But it is the pursuit of a worthy goal. And our worthy goal as the soul dive is a more fulfilled life, a more connected life, and a life that we are proud to live, um, happy to live, and proud to create. So to that end, our lovely guest, Bridget Edwards, do you have something we can add to our toolbox of fulfilled life? As I started off the talk, self-love, self-love, self-love. Because with self-love comes self-respect, comes self-appreciation, comes self-acceptance. Once you've got all of that in there, and if you can go and down my, download my book, and honestly, Lebo, I'm going to say this, if somebody cannot afford to pay for my book, please download the book for free as a gift of love from me to you, wherever you are in the world, whoever you are. Because in my book, I have so many tips and techniques that can really revolutionize your life. Taking you from a place of pain and suffering to seriously to a place of healing, to a place where you can become the greatest human being you were meant to be. So um, yeah. mm -hmm. my website that I gave, they will not be able to get the book on that website, the Bridget Edwards website. They need to follow the stress website that I gave you. It's the, the stress link that we're going to put here. So, That's the website yeah. where they'll be able okay. to download my book. Fantastic. And one last word from me, anybody who wants to get a consultation, I do do one-on-one -on -one, uh, online consultations. They're more than welcome to reach out to me and we can have a chat. And if I can help, I will. But every human being is a divine, is part of divine. We are all divine human beings in our own right. We have access to divinity. We have access to creativity. We have access to yeah. all of that. And when you embody self-love, everything opens up and changes. Absolutely. I want to take this moment and thank you for being with us uh, on the Soul Dive today. It means so much to us. We feel so privileged to have, um, you know, a person of your caliber having walked the journey yourself and now reaching back and holding other people's hands and being that guide and that sisterly love, that connection. And, you know, it's, it's so important. And I want to commend you and just say to you, thank you so much for doing that. I know that you do a lot of work uh, around townships and other things and other, but we only had so much time. So 
we didn't cover all of that, but we did sold out. We do know you so much better. And I do hope that everybody else actually got to experience the person I've gotten to experience when I've spent a little bit of time with you. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Lebo. <laughs> and thank you to all the listeners and viewers. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so that was that was Bridget Edwards. Um, if you have, if you just caught us, you've missed out a little bit, but don't worry. This is recorded, so you can um, check it out. Remember, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where these videos do get uploaded. It is hashtag Soul Dive with Label on YouTube, and um, we'll also post a link to that throughout the week for you. Uh, stress. Is an acceptable a normal thing there's bad stress there's good stress one thing for sure we have a choice in how we handle it we have a choice in how it affects us i only have one question are you still letting things outside of yourself determine who you are how you feel what you do and mold and change you into the image of itself because if you are doing that, my friend, you are missing out on creating a life that you can be proud of. And it is possible. All of us have within us the creative power to make our lives and to invite and open the door of our lives to the things that make us bloom, blossom, and thrive. It's been The Soul Dive. My name is Lebo.